Hey YouTube, welcome to RV Daydream, and it's a beautiful day out, but I think that's about to change. What have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. We have uh, thunderstorm warnings and all kinds of stuff going on, and it does look a little dark over there, and the wind's kicked up, and with the humidity the way it is, it probably is uh, going to storm. We're at about 74 degrees, so not too bad as far as temperature. I uh, got a bunch of stuff and uh, I want to talk about this real quick but first let's go to one more thing uh, somebody mentioned about the tanks um, I measured them you can see what it looks like I only moved them about five inches forward and uh, they stick out a total straight off here of less than eight inches um, I took a tape measure measured out and it's less than eight inches and you can see that the uh, saddle mount um, like I had mentioned before if it's out it's actually probably <laughs> a little bit more than that um, so yeah we're, we're we're okay I mean I would have to get that truck awful crooked for those things to touch uh, my tailgate I've never been that tight I've never had to maneuver that tight before I mean there's always a first but it's really not that big of a deal so I need to move this stuff around and get it uh, all positioned in here where it uh, is fitting pretty good so these are some of the things that I came across this is kind of nice I didn't even know they made that uh, we're gonna see what that looks like um, to, I'm not gonna be doing this all today you'll see it on this video but I'm not gonna be doing it today so I'll have this in my back pocket for a few days and uh, this adapter it's a Y adapter we're gonna take a look at that kind of quick uh, these are hose adapters for that uh, water pump thing that I was doing or the oil cooler here's my cord that's going to supply the electricity from the generator to the RV uh, this is a 30 foot piece I believe that's going to be enough and I got a couple of new units here's the transfer box uh, that I'm going to be installing in the RV it looks pretty straightforward not bad at all and while I'm at it uh, since we're getting AGM batteries I went ahead and got a, a smart uh, intelligent charger I think they call this a telepower and uh, these come with the uh, little wire wizard again I'll go over this in more detail but I just wanted to show you a quick glimpse of it now uh, before the storm comes I'm gonna go uh, run in and see if I can find a, a place for this in the RV but uh, in the meantime I want to see how these work that's why I got the propane tanks out so let me check that out first all right well thank God this cover is a little bit big because uh, I got some stuff underneath here now and uh, this is most likely what it's gonna look like when we're traveling except I don't travel with this cover on the the jack head um, it's just there for <laughs> protection while it sits even though it don't help very much that bullseye level broke again just because the heat so the generator is just sitting on here uh, I have yet to put any straps to hold it down or any kind of locking mechanism to hold it down uh, but it is protected with this cover the cover goes on really easy this cover is definitely more difficult to get on and off um, dealing with the generator and where it's at you can see I have an opening here and that's because of what's going on inside and what it's going to look like when we hook up so let me show you so you can see I got a hose running in here and that's because I have a Y fitting and that Y fitting allows this hose to be connected up and then this is just the factory regulator that came with the uh, generator uh, so as it stands right now uh, the propane's on you can see the tanks on I only turned on one tank but both tanks are still connected just like before and uh, yeah it would be nothing more than flipping that on pulling the choke turning the econo mode off hitting the button it's running and ideally it would be plugged in already 
so all I need to do is take off this cover and uh, start the generator and I'm set. Now obviously if I had a box or something that was surrounding this and make it a little bit easier because I could run it with it on. Uh, however, I think we're going to be okay. Um, and we'll have to see how that works out. I'm going to go ahead and turn economy mode on. Again, the, I suspect that the generator would be plugged in, but you can see there's plenty of room for the plug. So I don't have any clearance issues there. I think this will work out just fine. All right, guys, so this has been running for a little bit. Um, I don't know, maybe 25 minutes, 30 minutes. Yeah, about, nah, it's got to be longer than that. Probably about 35 minutes. So as far as the temperatures, uh, here's the temperature of the RV. We'll just pick random spots. It's 91 there. Uh, it's 89 here. And that's a little bit out of the sun. Uh, let's see. Well, that's in the sun. It's still 89 up there. 92 right there and we'll go to the exhaust side and this is probably the hottest area I don't know 108 104 107 109 101 let's go down a little bit 107 let's get real close to it let's try uh frame there. 99, let's try right here. Uh, 123, 121. It's right up where the exhaust is coming out. Let's try it inside. 123. Let's hit, I'm going to hit right on the exhaust pipe. About 135. And then this vent here, 125 there. Let's go in the exhaust pipe. 210, 218, 252. Let's go even further. 286, 284, 325. I got a 325 reading there. So that's hot, but I mean, right around it, it's not at all. Okay, now let's talk about in between here. Um, 95. 94, 93, let's try a little bit deeper in here, 92, 87, let's try this side, 84, let's try down here, 86, let's try the wheel, 85, let's try back here, 85, 86, there's a 91, I got a 91 there, let's go a little bit further. Uh, 94. I'm getting closer to the exhaust, I suppose. But yeah, it's it's not very hot. 118 in the sun. <laughs> Let's go back behind it in the sun. 104. <laughs> so 118 degrees. I don't know. It just feels like that it's hot that way from the sun, though. I don't think it's the temperature of the generator. Right here, I guess. 99, 101, 93. I mean, it's kind of hot out. Let's see what my truck is on on the side that's facing the sun. Um, 102. Let's try the tires. 197. Yeah, about 97. Let's try up here on this black. 107. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't think the temperatures are anything that's that great. So I think we're okay here. Yeah, this is working out. I, I'm really happy about the, the whole setup. We'll uh, get to the vibration and noise at another time because uh, the more I look at this, the more I think that I might not be running a, uh, a box of any kind because I really thought I was going to make a box and uh, slide it over top of this. So plans change. We'll have to see how uh, I feel about it in a few weeks here after I install all that other stuff. All right, YouTube, it's a new day and it's even more beautiful than yesterday. 
the dew points are real low, which I like a little bit more humid, but it is so hot out here. Got a bee trying to stab me. <laughs> yeah, it is really beautiful. They said that other than those clouds that are going off in the distance, they said you will not or have a hard time finding a cloud in the sky. Oh, there's a jet airplane way up there. I don't think you guys can see that though. That's too wide angle of a lens. Yeah, this is a delightful, delightful day. Heidi's in here working. I see she she must have seen me because she turned down the radio. You know, copyright. I'm going to open up this awning too to get all the water out. So let's see what kind of disaster she's got going on in here. Oh my God, it's messy. Look how messy you've made it. It's horribly messy. Why'd you do that? <laughs> oh, you're getting those cabinets up top. That looks pretty good so far. It's just a primer, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, of course, painting is going on for Heidi. I showed you guys the box that Heidi has now covered up with everything underneath the bed. And eventually I'll get that wired. Our AGM batteries are, are coming today. Do? No. Uh, this no. Not done no. Uh, oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, today I've got to uh, do a little bit more work on my truck. i got a part coming that will help out. My goal today is to get this painted. Even though I know you don't like this up here. Well, at least glue it before you paint it, please. Uh, I just primed it, so. No, it needs paint. It needs okay. glued. Well, it needs dry. It, well, why did you paint it? I'll sip it. Who cares? <laughs> I do. It looks dumb. It's going to look even dumber after it's painted. Dumb and dumber. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with what we're talking with or about, um, this... I might just cut it all out, just like you did the rest of the stuff. Well, you can't. I, I don't think you understand what's behind this. It's a bunch of paneling that's shredded. So you're going to have multi-layer okay, well, strips of wood. Like it's spray adhesive. Or... No, we have spray adhesive. That's what we're supposed to use before you put anything on there. So the whole idea or what happened here was when we first got the RV, it was infested with mice. Not that there was any alive in it, but mice had been living in it and all these vents that are in the floor it's kind of why I'm kind of pointing the camera down here all these vents were the mice habit trail you guys remember habit trails do you remember habit trails it was little hamster tunnels that kids had little balls that they used to run around in so anyways um, the little vent that was here uh, allowed the mice to I don't know how they did it but they basically set up shop underneath this shower assembly so when I removed this panel to to look in there it, it was just you know little mice pellets and uh, nest there was nest and stuff so you have no idea how much work I did <laughs> pulling out this furnace cleaning all of the furnace completely out I mean Ex extensively which I shot video of that I think it was years ago did I do that on our channel yeah I did that on a Fox Boss 9 on the Fox Boss 9 channel um, and then uh, all this here underneath I cleaned all that out we got a brush a chimney sweep brush and uh, we sprayed all kinds of bleach and and everything to decontaminate it and I cleaned all the, the, the duct work but underneath the shower, there was I couldn't get to it. It was on the other side of the drain and the basin. So I had to remove this wall. I had to take this wall out. And this wall is all one piece, which I didn't realize how that worked initially. So um, I only took off the paneling of the wall. But once I got it off, it worked. I mean, I, I got underneath there and I cleaned and disinfected to a point where it was shiny and it was definitely definitely fixed but this is the downfall this is what I was doing trying to get the paneling to come off it was it was breaking up and and doing all kinds of weird stuff and and we just kind of patched it up so I gotta find a way to to get that glued back because it's gonna not it's gonna show up it's gonna show up under you know when we paint yeah when I say we, I mean her. So I'm waiting for some parts to come UPS. Our, uh, again, our AGM batteries are coming, stuff like that. But I got work to do on the truck. And then uh, once the truck is finally finished, I'll, I'll feel pretty good about um, 
starting to work in here but I don't have to worry about that for now and I left you my drill driver how nice is that just used it for two things. how dare you you used, used my drill driver you used my screwdriver oh for shame all right guys it's an awesome day out though um, well Heidi's already moved the the temperature thing so I can't tell you what the temperature is in here but it's not that bad it was like 58% humidity. Yeah, yeah, the humidity's real low today because the dew no, points are really low. Well, 57% humidity, and it's going to even drop further. They said something about 49% uh, today, potentially. That'll be really nice. So is that what you're going to be doing, huh? Painting? Yep. Cleaning and painting. All right, I'm going to let her go at it. So Michael gave me this camera this morning to record, and I didn't. All I've been doing is painting. So, just show you a little bit of what's been going on. Of course, I'm not a very good video taker. And of course, it's messy in here. Today, I painted the upper cabinets in the wall by the microwave and behind the stove. And down here where we had our stereo. Um, and then I think that maybe we fix this wall he's been freaking crying about. Crybaby. I guess he fixed it. He fixes everything, he says. So. But I got a couple coats of primer on there. Gotta let it dry. I did do uh, prime this. I only have like one coat of primer on above the refrigerator and the wall and the furnace there. So that was my day. How exciting. All right. Yet another day and an, another great beautiful weather day. Go figure that out. Yeah. Dew points are low. It's going to be a little bit warmer today. I uh, left the awning out all night because there's not much going on as far as weather. Uh, that's the change, I think, in a couple days, but so far so good. And this progress that we have going on seems to be going kind of slow. I think that's what I'm going to be titling the video. And I think today, unfortunately, is going to make the video kind of long because I think I'm going to try to squeeze in this installation I'm doing with the cable. Uh, first, let me show you what I had to do on the truck. Well, as you guys know, I put that oil cooler in here, uh, and everything was fine. I had to make a return of some extra hose and some fittings up to Summit Racing, which is about 27 miles away. So I drove the truck like a maniac up there, and when I came back, I noticed that I had a real small leak on, on the fitting for the uh, oil cover. You can see here. You got to run a couple different fittings. I could either run uh, four of these with straights, or I could run one of these and one of these. Obviously, you know, you had to put this one in first because it needs room to swing, and then I put these in with the straight fittings. I noticed that this one was leaking slightly after I did all that driving around. So I removed this fitting. And first I had to remove the straight fitting, remove this elbow, and then I resealed this and put it back in, fired up the truck, and this one started leaking. So now I had to pull this one out, uh, of course the straight fitting off, this one out. I reinstalled it all. I had to turn this just slightly, a little bit. I put it all back together. And then this one started leaking. You can see where it's at now. It's sitting on my workbench. I got rid of all that. I went ahead and paid for a high quality one. This is for racing purposes. And I installed that one. Uh, this is a Canton racing piece. And as far as I can tell, I don't have any leaking. And I shouldn't have any leaking. I ran this for quite some time yesterday. Uh, after I sprayed it down with brake clean and I didn't see any leaks whatsoever and this one's so much easier to install so that's what I was waiting for yesterday today I've got to run down to the uh, parts store the uh, hardware store 
and I need to get some cable clamps, which I think are still inside. Uh, Heidi showed me some soft clamps that she had picked up down there, and they're going to work out great for the cable. And I also need to get um, wire nuts. So let me go do All that. Alright, so I ran down to the hardware store uh, just down the street. Had to pick up some wire nuts that were big enough. I had a few, but I didn't have enough to do what I need to do today. Um, and I bought some more soft clamps. So that should get it to where I can route this on the frame and get it up out of the way. I had some screws. I, I think these might work. They're some self-tappers. Um, I've had them forever. Um, I don't know about these. These are like a rubber thing. I don't know if I need that. But anyways, we'll see if that works out. Hopefully it does. That way I don't have to drill and then put a, a bolt in or something like that. Hopefully that will go into the frame somehow. And uh, then the cord. Now this is a 30 foot cord. I'll put the link down below for all this stuff like always. Uh, but this is a 30 foot cord. It looks like it's pretty good quality. It had decent reviews. Uh, there is some sort of an insulation in there. And again, I'm hopefully going to just have it going on the frame. Uh, there's a couple spots that's going to be kind of tricky. Now I had to get my string trimmer out because <laughs> the weeds have gotten high and I haven't done any string trimming. So I'm going to lay some uh, carpet and cardboard out so I'm not laying in a bunch of ants or something that I don't realize until it's too late. And uh, just basically route this cord all the way to the back of the RV and I'll show you where it's going to go up in eventually when I get it back there. So let's pick it up a little bit from now. There's a couple things that's apparent. Uh, first I was going to route it on the back side here of the frame. Well, actually starting on the inside here. And then this is the flat part of the frame. I, I know the lighting's horrible, but... Um, and I was just going to route it all the way back and keep it above the frame. However, because of all the braces and everything, I'll turn you around here. Because all the bracing and everything, I would be going like under this bracket, which there is a space here, which is fine. But then the next one I'd have to go under or over. Um, so I chose under for this one, but then the one, the next further back that I'm pointing at here, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but um, that one I was going to go over. Well, I found that I'm, as I was getting further back on the frame, I'm over, I'm under, I'm over, I'm under. And I was just thinking about the, the soft clamps and how they would support and how many I would need uh, to help with these sharp edges. Because every time I went under something and then maybe back over something, you know, it's going to rub an edge. Well, I don't mind if it's rubbing a flat, but when it's rubbing an edge, that, that's more of an issue. So I've always just laid my power cord uh, up in this channel. Um, and as I got closer to the front, uh, you know, I would do stuff like uh, this. I would. Uh, put it up in the U-bolts for the uh, gas line because there's a bracket that's attached to the frame. But for the most part, I always tried to lay the cord up in this flat area. Well, the more I thought about it, uh, that flat area is kind of ideal for the cord. So that's really where I'm running everything now. Um, and I found that definitely 30 foot of cord on this RV is plenty, which, which it should. It's just I didn't know for sure. And I'd rather have too much that I have to cut off than uh, too much. All right, well. let's see some of my handiwork. Now, the cord is up underneath here. Well, un underneath the tank cover. Uh, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> Tell you the truth, I was screwing around thinking how to protect it. And I thought, well, it'll fit underneath the tank cover. And I kind of left it there. So we got plenty of uh, reach for the generator, um, which I would assume the plug is here or lower. Actually, I believe it's right here so you can see the kind of cord reach we have there um, it's secured pretty well I went ahead and installed the uh, soft clamp there the light will screw up and I, I put hose I put split hose on this where I thought it might rub um, I have a tendency to do this a lot it's probably overkill well I know it's overkill but worst that'll happen is the wire was short and there'd be an issue with uh, it shutting off but Anyways, uh, a soft clamp here. I've got a split hose on this part because this will see a lot of road action, you know, as far as uh, rocks and stuff like that. I mean, if the, the, the gas line can handle it, I'm sure that that cord can handle it, but I still protected it. Another soft clamp here to help with this transition. I got a piece of curved 
uh, water pump hose that I had for a long time. I don't even know where I got it at. And then uh, it goes underneath and uh, soft clamp there. Going back a little further, wire tied to the gas bracket. Again, soft clamp here. Back a little further, uh, wire tied, wire tied. And then I put a soft clamp here because being that this is the suspension, I want to make sure it doesn't have a tendency to work its way out. Double wire tie on this, work its way out and uh, get rubbed by the tires in any manner or form, which we're in pretty good shape there. It's not going to get out. And then a uh, soft clamp back here. And then another wire tie. And then another curved piece of hose that I had. I don't even know where I got it at. I don't even know what it's for. <laughs> I think it's a smog pump uh, off of a Lincoln Town Car I scrapped years ago or a Continental. And then uh, a soft clamp. And then I'm going to run up in the floor by these wires. You can see here's the ground wire. Here's another ground wire. I believe this is the ground wire for all the uh, 12 volt accessories. And then this is the ground wire for the electricity, the AC side of things. Um, yeah, and then I've got to drill a hole and you can see it's already been doctored up there and that's what I'll have to do again. But then here's the cord. I got plenty uh, to get up in. Uh, let's stand back a little bit. Yeah, you can see how far I am from the coach, <laughs> from the RV, I mean. <laughs> so I still got five foot that I can get up inside the bedroom and, and screw around with. All right, so got creative inside, but I wanted to show you the underside here. Uh, again, we already know about this little elbow. And then I went ahead and just wire tied. I went ahead and wire tied the um, cable to these two ground cables that are supported really well. And then I put uh, polyurethane on there. That stuff will dry. It's better than silicone. It's the same thing that holds your windshield in your car. Uh, it works really well. This is the stuff we used on my uh, son's van roof when we uh, removed the bolts. He had holes in his roof from that roof rack the guy mounted on it. Um, same here. Anyways, the stuff dries really hard and it's very weather resistant. It's very supportive um, and it's pretty tough to come off. So that'll help with any kind of vibration or anything like that. It's not gonna fall down. It's not gonna hang down or anything like that. Uh, the cord, this is what I had left over from the uh, cord that I just ran. And the good thing is, is that this cord is a little bit too short that goes to the, the control panel. So I'm gonna use this longer one. And I've notched this here for the cable to come through. This is coming back from the back of the coach. This is the plug. Again, this is the fuse panel. And then this is the generator uh, cord that I just ran. So what I'm going to do so I don't lose any storage, we hardly use this area here. Uh, this is a shelf that mounts like so. And uh, we've never really used it. You know, it takes up space. It's made to protect this. So you can see there's a hole in it. And what I'm going to do is mount this box, this transfer box. Boy, this thing's rattly. Uh, I'm going to mount it right here. And I'm going to run uh, this cord, or I should say the longer cord, through this knockout here. The generator through this knockout right here. These knockouts I haven't knocked out yet. Kind of see them here. So this is going to come out, this one's going to come out, that's where this cord's going, and then this one's coming out. And I'll be able to tie it all in, the transfer will be up top. Um, it doesn't say anything about mounting it sideways on top, you know, upside down, it doesn't say any of that. Uh, it does have a reference as far as the pictures, um, and it shows, you know, up to panel, but it doesn't say anything. Yeah, this thing doesn't say up you know sideways down and it shouldn't make much of a difference the only thing I could see that might make a difference is if I was running the generator as I went down the road <laughs> which <laughs> I don't think I would but you never know I, I mean I think about it sometimes and there may be a situation that I might um, if I hit bumps 
I don't know how well this is going to stay energized. Uh, I would hope that it stays energized so much that it can handle, uh, you know, bumps and vibrations. But if I hit a really hard bump to bounce the trailer, um, I don't know if it would break contact. I doubt it, but you yeah, never know. All right, so I have the generator plugged in, and you can see I have voltage just reading 118, but my polarity check, there's nothing there. It says it's an open ground. Um, it's not really an open ground, but what the problem is, is that there's no bonded uh, neutral. It's uh, something that generators have an issue with. All right, everything's working fine in here still. You can see the air conditioning is on and it's running. Uh, we're at 116 volts, but you can see the polarity, it still says open ground. Now I spoke with Champion and that is because they said it is a floating neutral generator. Now, the only reason I called them is because I seen there was a way to bond the neutral to the ground. However, they said that you can't do that with uh, their generator because their generator is not set up that way. Uh, the guy that I spoke with at Champion, he was very polite. He said, you know, in theory you could take and uh, touch on your generator your hot wire and your ground together and it would just, it wouldn't spark or nothing, it would just quit producing power. Um, as a safety feature and he says that has to do with the fact that it's a recreational generator It's meant to be used out in the open and if you get wet, you know, they don't want uh, you to, Anybody to get shocked uh, so I spoke to him about the ground on the generator and he said that It um, doesn't need to be hooked up uh, to the RV that is for like lightning strikes so to answer everybody's question, that grounding lug on the front of the generator, at least on the Champion generators, you don't need to do anything with it. That's what they say. Now I did put a call in to Progressive Industries just to make sure that I don't have to do anything, any additional wiring uh, for this to continue to work. Right now it's working fine, but I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> you know, I, I wanted to play it safe. So yeah, all this stuff is working with that transfer switch. So. Let's go play around now with the transfer switch and see what happens if I plug in the RV. All right, so I have the RV plugged in to the garage. And as far as the power is concerned, I'm still running on the generator. I can tell uh, by the way the contacts are that I'm running on the generator. So let me turn off the uh, generator. I'm going to see if the transition is a smooth one from running uh, on the generator like I currently am but shutting it off and see if I maintain power because I'm connected to the house at that point. All right, so you saw the light flash whenever I disconnected the generator and the contacts are indeed touching for the power cord now. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plug the generator back in now that I'm plugged into the uh, household current and see what the generator does. See what this switch decides. Because as far as I know, uh, the generator is supposed to override the shore power, but I think it will only do that when shore power returns. I don't think that it's going to make a difference now, but we'll find out. We're going to learn together. All right, so the RV's plugged in, the generator's plugged in, and the switchover box, I gotta get a little bit lower here, just switched over to the generator all by itself. So that should answer anybody's question, what would happen? If you're running on shore power and you turn your generator on, it will override the shore power and it will run on the generator instead so that was that was good to see that was good to find out yeah this is working out just fine it's doing everything exactly like it's supposed to the only thing i was concerned with was that ground situation and of course i'm going to talk to the people at progressive dynamics and find out 
uh, if I have to worry about any sensitive electronics uh, running this generator through this transfer switch and including the uh, smart power charger um, that's that's kind of a concern uh, you know it's a, it's got a lot of circuitry in there for intelligent decisions and if I'm running on the generator I would hate for it to make some bad decisions based on an open ground or a floating neutral I got a different fitting I got a T fitting in here other than that Y because I was having a hard time uh, with these hoses and I, I just didn't like the whole setup now this generator um, is able to be left plugged in which is really sweet uh, to where you can travel you can do whatever you want and it's going to uh, change over as soon as you fire it up now some people may think well what happens if your your electric start don't work well ultimately what I'd like to do is take my 12 volt system on my RV and uh, make that the supply for the the uh, starter uh, of the generator here but I think that I'll continue to uh, just use it the way it is until a problem exists and then I'll go ahead and address the problem but I can always pull start it I mean I can get to the pull start you don't have to pull this straight on I mean it can be pulled just like I'm showing you here the only thing that I can say that I really don't like is uh, the angle in which this is at uh, right here um, so I'm thinking about trying to find some sort of a, a 90 with this low pressure gas fitting uh, it shouldn't be too hard to do I mean they do make these and if I can find a 90 with a, a quick disconnect that would be great that would make it a lot easier uh, so yeah I mean I just unplugged the the, the uh, generator shut it off and the RV still has power because it's hooked up to uh, that transfer switch and the transfer switch decided to go this route yeah I like this I like the whole setup this is getting better every day um, again the only thing I'm concerned about is some sort of a box and I just don't I don't know if I can do it I mean that's what this gap is for right here is so I could mount something uh, up and then over and then the same back here so maybe there is still something in my future something really basic that will allow me to uh, you know put this generator in uh, some sort of a box and then have the front relatively open so I can access the panel yeah I don't know I gotta clean up my mess I do know that and I gotta tuck the the power cords back in now here's something that's really cool I can take my current power uh, cord that's in the back of the RV that's you know the normal power cord and I can put it away I do not have to leave it out because this extension cord can now plug into this right here yeah isn't that awesome uh, I mean it don't need to be you know just the generator that powers this it can be the household power so the nice thing is is I don't have to have this cord all draped and you know out of the RV it can go back into its little holder in the back there's there's so many pluses to this so far I haven't found any negatives uh, we'll have to see how that works in the long run 